Do you know the correct chronology of the Ogre Battle Saga? The Ogre Battle Saga currently has five officially released games that share the same universe and references and that are spread across multiple platforms. In 1993, the first game in the series, Ogre Battle, The March of the Black Queen, was released. Named as Episode 5, it was released to the Super Famicom, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation 1, and tells the story of the protagonist Destin Faroda. In 1995, the best-known and acclaimed game of the saga, Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, was released. Named as Episode 7 and released to the Super Famicom, Sega Saturn and PlayStation 1, tells the story of protagonist Danum Pavel. In 1999, Ogre Battle 64, Person of Lordly Caliber, was released. Named as Episode 6, this title is exclusive to the Nintendo 64 and tells the story of the protagonist Magnus Gallant. In 2000, Ogre Battle Gaiden, Prince of Zenobia, was released. This is not considered one of the numbered games, being exclusive to Neo Geo Pocket Color. This is the only title that has not been officially translated from the Japanese language so far. This one tells the story of Prince Tristan of Zenobia. In 2001, another game of the saga was released with a tactical style. Tactics Ogre, The Knight of Lodis. Exclusive to Game Boy Advance, this is another game that is not numbered. It tells the story of the protagonist named Alphonse Lower. In 2010, Tactics Ogre received a remake for the PSP. Called Tactics Ogre, Wheel of Fortune, there were many changes to resemble the game with Final Fantasy tactics, mainly in battle mechanics and characters. In 2022, Tactics Ogre would receive another version. Using the previous remake, many improvements were added and other features that hindered the game removed. Now called Tactics Ogre Reborn, it is available for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC and is considered one of the best versions of this classic. This is the official release order of the titles, with three numbered games and two spin-offs. As for the canonical story, the order is a little different. It starts with Tactics Ogre, the Knight of Lodis, and then we have Ogre Battle Gaiden, Prince of Zenobia. There begins Episode 5, The March of the Black Queen. Then, Episode 6, Person of Lordly Caliber, and Episode 7, Reborn, take place simultaneously in the story. I have videos here on the channel explaining in detail the plot of each of these games. I'll leave it on the card above if you're interested. Some information about a possible Episode 8 surfaced once, but that game was never released. It would be called Ogre Battle, in the lap of the gods, and I made a video showing what this game could look like. I'll leave it on the card above for you to see later. Considering the rich plot and subplots that the Ogre Battle series features, I decided to imagine how some new games could be made. I only considered the plots already superficially shown in the official games as inspiration, in addition to maintaining the tradition of naming the games after songs by the band Queen. Warning, spoilers ahead. Okay. Now. Considering the absence of episodes 1 to 4 to complete the saga, I would start with them and then the spin-offs. 
I would call episode one as Ogre Battle, The Fairy Feller's King. In this title, the world before the Ogre Battle takes place would be addressed. We would see the earth being inhabited by humans, magical beings, gods, ogres, and other creatures. We would know a story that would involve some conspiracy with the King of the Fairies, and we would also know the origin story of Slust, Fenrir, and Fogel, and what led them to become heroes chosen by the gods in the next games. I would end the game with the legendary fight against the divine dragon Bytolf, which lasted seven days and seven nights and ended with the heroes winning despite Fogel being cursed with a draconian appearance. For episode two of the saga, I would call it as Tactics Ogre, A Dozen Red Roses. In this game, we would play as Lexar Firecrest and experience the original ogre battle that legends tell of. I would expect to see many conspiracies of humans who would willingly side with the ogres, for example. This game would end with the gameplay of the last battle for humanity that took place in the Castellation Sea, with the interference of the gods in favor of humans. The army of angels, the three legendary dragoons, the twelve disciples, all allied with the human king Lexar, finally defeating the threat of the ogres and sealing them inside the Chaos Gates. For episode 3 of the saga, I would call it as Tactics Ogre, The Prophet's Song. The main focus of this title would be the Twelve Disciples, also known as the White Sages, who stayed on Earth after the Ogre Battle to pass on their teachings to humans. We would have the start of what would become the Rashful Religion and the creation of the Twelve Zodiac Stones. The main threat of this episode would be the traitor Deruta, the strongest of the Twelve Disciples, who ended up becoming interested in the Black Arts in search of power and would create the Black Diamond to rival the other stones. The final battle would be against Deruta himself, where the Eleven Disciples, with the help of the Three Knights of Heaven, would defeat the powerful Sage and imprison him within the Black Diamond. Now, for episode 4 of the saga, I would call it as Ogre Battle, Heaven for Everyone. In this episode, we would meet Lord Lodis, a saint sent by heaven who would preach his doctrine to humans. Admonish overconfidence and blind faith, and recognize the significance of one's existence is his maximum doctrine, and through it he would establish the religion of Lodisism. It is in this game that we would see the creation of the Holy Lodi's Empire and the beginning of its expansion ambitions and domination of other peoples and cultures through the Templars and the Crusades. With that we would have the beginning of the basis of the larger story that would continue in the canonical episodes 5, 6, and 7. With regards to spin-offs that would not be numbered episodes, there are many side stories that would be extremely interesting to tackle. In Night of Lodis, there is mention of the Mermaid War, an event that involved the war between mermaids and humans on the island of Ovis in the past. I would make a game that would tell precisely this conflict. I would call it as Tactics Ogre, Somebody to Love, which would explore that conflict and how the mermaid Berevra met the knight Lucius Petro. This amorous involvement is what caused the mermaid's betrayal of her own race by stealing the spear Longicones and causing them to lose the war against the humans. In the March of the Black Queen, the entire story of the continent prior to the game is commented on how they were organized into five main kingdoms and what led the Empress to create her empire later. I would call it as Tactics Ogre, White Queen, as it began, and tell the story of Queen Endora of the Kingdom of Highland before the creation of the sacred Zydogenian Empire. We would see the threat of invasion by the Empire of Lodis to the north, the meeting between the five main rulers and their betrayal of the Queen. Rashidi would be presented as a hope for Endora against the other kingdoms and all the war that would ensue with it.
In person of lordly caliber, we have a lot of interesting subplots that would be great as games. First, I would make a game about the entire origin of the Kingdom of Palatinus, telling the story of the war between the nomadic tribes of the Oryx and the Indigans that culminates in the control of that territory. It would be called as Ogre Battle, Stone Cold Crazy, and the protagonist would be the warrior of the Oryx tribe, Virago del Mare, also known as Virago the Progenitor, who discovers the ultimate power and becomes the first king of the official Kingdom of Palatinus, unifying Oryx and Indigans. Another interesting story that takes place before Ogre Battle 64 is the fall of the Kingdom of Nildum, which is inhabited by the Balmakan people in one of the Lodi's Crusades. This is a very dramatic story, where the two princes of the kingdom disagree on what to do about the war and end up creating an internal war between them and causing the domination and enslavement of their people by Lodi's. For that reason, the name of the game being Ogre Battle Breakthrough seems satisfactory to me. Lastly, an interesting story that is said to take place at the end of Ogre Battle 64 is the invasion of Palatinus by a group of barbarians from the east from the sea. This war was so violent that it ended up costing the lives of many people of Palatinus, including the ruler himself. Ogre Battle, Seaside Rendezvous, would capture this whole conflict perfectly. Regarding Reborn Stories, the one that should be told is the struggle of the five kingdoms before the game. Known as Dorgalua's Great War, it is in this conflict that the Isles of Valeria will be unified under one ruler, the mighty Dorgalua Aberith. A story full of twists, turns, and betrayals, whose consequences would be the cause of the official game. In Ogre Battle, Days of Our Lives, we would get to know not only these headstrong rulers, but also the past and involvement of figures like Branton Warren and Ruva Farina throughout this conflict. Another story mentioned briefly in Reborn is the coup that took place in Lodi's. In this event, there was a conspiracy within the Empire to elevate Pope Sardian as supreme ruler, instead of the king and senators. This caused an internal war where several important knightly orders were involved. A massacre took place, but in the end the coup was successful and the Pope became the ruler of the whole Empire. Tactics Ogre, Man on the Prowl, would be the game to tell that story. These would be games about subplots featured in the saga. We could also have completely unique stories with no prior involvement to further expand the universe. Like a unique game by fan favorite, Canopus Wolf. We could know his background before March of the Black Queen with a greater focus on Hogman society. How it works, how they are organized. Canopus is part of a royal cast of that race, so would they have some sort of king? Of kingdom? Why did this character and his sister ran away? A great plot for Tactics Ogre, Ride the Wild Wind. There are many descriptions of an Eastern Kingdom to the East in Ogre Battle, so why not expand on that with a unique and exclusive story? Dynasties, emperors, culture, and tradition can all be covered in Tactics Ogre in the court of Ming the Merciless. And finally, we couldn't do without an exclusive game featuring our favorite little witch. In Ogre Battle, only the good die young, 
we would follow Dinebro traveling around the world, meeting people, and getting into a lot of trouble. A guaranteed sales success. That's how I would put together the whole saga. Do you have any stories you think would be worth making a game about? Write below in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and see you next time with more videos from the Ogre Battle Saga.